I mentioned the uh, acid-base properties of amino acids quite a bit in the, in the first lecture, but I want to touch on it a little bit more kind of in this specialized um, section here. So amino acids typically are found as what we refer to as Zwitter ions. So Zwitter ion is this fancy word that basically means you have both a positive and a negative charge in the same compound. So it means you have kind of, if you look over here, right, the NH3 is a plus, the carboxylate group is COO minus, you have them both in the same compound, that's going to be a Zwitter ion. And that's going to be your normal form of an amino acid. If you notice over here, right, the book says this neutral form of an amino acid does not exist. Um, that might be a bit of a stretch. It exists in very, 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 very small quantities, but it usually does exist a little bit. Um, but suffice it to say, this is the form over here, the salt form, um, the Zwitter ion form that you should be more familiar with. Uh, so in terms of another important feature of amino acids besides that acid-base chemistry, um, we also want to talk about their stereochemistry. So if you remember, we talked about stereochemistry. We started off talking about it with cis-trans isomers, but then we also talked about it um, in our sugar chapter, and we talked about D versus L sugars. Well, amino acids kind of have that same designation of D versus L amino acids, and except for amino acids, the L amino acids are the naturally occurring ones. So it's the same idea of, as the sugars, where you kind of line up your carbons, like you do here, and it's the same thing we did with our sugars. We lined up all of our carbons, and then for sugars, we said that the OH furthest away from the carbonyl group would determine whether it was D or L. Well, amino acids don't have an OH, so instead we look to see where the amine group is in relation to that carbonyl group. On the left, it's going to be L. If it's on the right, it's going to be D. So all naturally occurring amino acids are going to be L amino acids. Um, so you really don't even have to worry about the D amino acids. I'm just trying to use this to point out that that stuff that we learned for the sugars does play come into play with more than just sugars. It also has to do with amino acids. All right, so L amino acids are your um, naturally occurring amino acids. Uh, in terms of the acid base properties of amino acids, which we talked about, um, again, the amine side can be in either in a neutral form, which is the base form, or it can be in a positively charged form when it at, when it's has gained the proton and is the conjugate acid. Similarly, the carboxylic acid can be in a neutral form, where it would be a COOH, right? And it would lose an H plus to get to the conjugate base form of that carboxylate ion. So for the ammonium side, it would be NH2 would gain an H plus to get to the NH3 plus. So amino acids can exist in different forms depending on the pH of their environment. All right, so let's do this as an example. So this is going to be kind of an important example, I think, to not only draw an amino acid, but to draw it properly at different pHs. So we're going to draw it at pH 1, pH 7, and pH 14. So um, let's start with pH 7. And the reason I want to start at pH 7 is because that's going to be your normal pH that you should be most familiar with. So the general structure of an amino acid is going to be when you have an NH3 plus, right? For your amine sign, remember at pH 7, usually it's going to be in that protonated state. And then you're going to have CH with an R group. And now for serine, that's the one we're going to look at here. It gives us the R group. So we're just going to write CH2OH as the R group. And then we're going to have the carboxylic acid on this side, which is going to be C, double bonded to O, bonded to O. But this one is typically in the O minus side. So at pH 7, right? So at pH 7, uh, pH 7, you're going to have amine is going to be in the plus state and the carboxylic acid. is going to be in the negative state. And actually, maybe I'll do it this way. Um, let's write pH 
kind of down here. So pH 7, right, that's going to be the state for both of them. All right, so now what happens if we go to pH 1? So what I'm going to do is come in here and I am going to erase my pH 7 and I'm going to change this to pH 1 in blue. Okay, so P H1. So remember, a lower pH means it's going to be more acidic. So we're going to have to make some changes in our structure based on the pH. Now the only places we have to worry about making any changes are going to be with the amine or the carboxylic acid. We don't have to touch the serine part, right? We don't have to touch that CH2OH because that's not a side chain that's going to vary based on pH. Now, if we had any of those acid or basid, basic side chains, right, a lysine, an arginine, a histidine, an aspartic acid or a glutamic acid, then we would have to look at these and put them in their right state. But we don't have to worry about that for this one. All right, so for pH 1, what's going to happen? Well, remember, at a lower pH, it's going to be more acidic. When it's more acidic, we want to draw everything in the acid form. Well, our amine side here is already in the acid form. It already has the proton on it. So remember, the options for your amine are going to be either the NH3+, plus, or it could be in kind of the NH2 form, right? So which one has more protons? Which one is the acid form? It's going to be the NH3+, plus, right? So at pH 1 we're going to stay in NH3+. Now, let's look over here at the carboxylic acid group. So, the alternative form for the carboxylic acid group would be a C double bonded to O bonded to OH. All right? So, which one is more acidic? Well, this is going to be the acid form, and this form over here is going to be the base. Right? And the reason I say that, right, the acid is going to have more protons. So at pH 1, we want to draw this in an acid form. So instead of that COO minus, we have to get rid of that because it's not going to be COO minus anymore. Instead, this is going to be COOH. So let me go through whoops, and erase my acid and base drawings there. Um, so that's going to be now the acid one. So going down, uh, down here, if we were to draw this at pH 1, so at pH 1, the carboxylic acid now has zero charge, right? It's going to be neutral, right? So zero or neutral. How can I write this? Neutral. And then the amine is still going to have a positive charge to it. All right, so pH 1, the carboxylic acid side is going to be neutral, and it's going to be in the COOH form. The amine is still going to be in the NH3 plus form. So now our last pH is going to be pH 14. So what's going to happen at pH 14? All right, so let's go through and let me try to clean this up a little bit. All right, so let's kind of look at what's going to happen there. All right, so pH 14. This is very basic, right? So because 14 is very basic, we want to draw the basic forms of both the amine and the carboxylic acid. All right, so what are the basic forms going to be? Well, the basic forms means it's going to be the forms without the plus on them. So that means we need to get rid of the H plus here. Because remember, whenever we looked at NH, whenever we looked at the amine side, it could either be NH2, NH2, or it could be NH3+, plus, but we said the NH2 form was the basic form. So now that's how we have to draw it in our structure. Now, for the carboxylic acid side, 
the carboxylic acid side is C double bonded to O bonded to OH when it's in an acid, but whenever it's not an acid and it's a base, it loses the H plus. So we're going to lose that H plus here, and now that's going to be an O minus. So it's going to be O minus. All right, so at pH 14, coming down here to the bottom, the amine group is now going to be have no charge or be neutral, whereas the carboxylic acid side is going to have a negative charge. So hope, hopefully you got all that. Um, I want to go to the next slide and just kind of summarize it briefly by drawing something out. So if you were to have your amino acid, so if you can think of your amine group as going to be NH2, let's just draw an amino acid, CH with an R group, and COOH. So your amine group, right, that can either be NH2 or NH3+. plus. Those are your only two options for that, all right? Your COOH can either be COOH or COO minus. Those are your only two options for that. All right? So it's one or the other. So now if you do it at pH 1, pH 7, pH 14, what do you have? So at pH 1 is going to be acidic, so it's going to be the acid form. At pH 7, it's always going to be charged, and then at pH 14, it's going to be in the basic form. So let me add on to this. This is going to be basic, and this is going to be acidic. This one is going to be acidic. It has the extra H. This one is going to be basic. So now if we came over here for our carboxylic acid group and did that exact same exercise, we would say at pH 1, pH 7, and pH 14. At pH 1 is very acidic, so you're going to have that one. At pH 7, you're always going to have the charged form, right? At normal neutral pHs, it's going to be in the Zwitter ion state where you have both, everything is going to be charged. And then at pH 14, it's going to be basic, so it's going to be over there. So hopefully that's a good summary to help uh, put everything into perspective for you.